Welcome to this online course. I'm Kalani Das, a percussionist, music therapist, and host at World Drum Club on YouTube. I'm really pleased you're joining me. Today, I'm going to talk to you about how you can incorporate a few what we call world rhythms, which are rhythms that are exotic from other places, <laughs> some far away, some closer. I'll be giving you about four different rhythms from kind of general geographic areas around the world, and they all have different feels and they make you want to move in different ways. And that's part of the goal uh, in music therapy is to give people options, move in different ways, have different ideas, maybe breathe new life into some songs and things that you've been doing so far. So this will give you a way to change those up and also tap into some uh, new music. Pun absolutely intended. Once I introduce you to these four rhythms, then I'm going to talk about some handheld items, hand percussion items that are suitable for small children. I'll also talk about some implements that you can use uh, in lieu of hands for children or for you, if you'd prefer that. All right, so let's get right to it. The first rhythm I'm going to share with you goes like this. And you can vocalize these along with me. I'll probably use some vocal sounds to describe these as well. Doom, tak, 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 doom, tak. You don't have to use the same sounds I am. Those are some traditional vocables that are used in what we refer to as Middle Eastern or Arab drumming. This rhythm is called Ayub, A-Y-U-B. And it's very simple. It has a nice feel, kind of a bouncy feel. It's a steady beat rhythm, but it's got a little exotic twist to it, uh, that what we could call a dotted eighth note uh, feel. All right, really fun rhythm, pretty simple, just doing steady beat on the low sound. And by the way, I'm using a drum called a darbuka. You might know this as the... Uh, as the word uh, Doombeck, um, it has different names in different countries, in different regions. Darbuka is one of them. That's what I'm going to call it. <laughs> uh, this is a uh, Arab drum or North North African Egyptian style drum, popular in the, in what we call the Middle East or the Eastern Mediterranean, uh, all the way over to Iran, Iraq, um, Lebanon, Turkey, uh, and Egypt. Um, so you can use any drum for these rhythms. I'm using this one. I think this is a great drum for music therapy applications. And you can find variations of this drum all the way from, you know, this traditional uh, either clay or this is aluminum, kind of heavy. You can find these drums made of PVC or maybe a wood type drum, like a child djembe sized drum. Whatever you want to use is fine. Um, you can play it like I am. This is the traditional way over your leg at about a 45 degree angle uh, and then with the hand on top or you can play this drum in this way which we would call the lap style or you know conga djembe technique where you can do um, this kind of uh, symmetrical drumming might be easier for you if you're not used to that traditional technique so either way is fine You can play Ayub, and you can play it on any other kind of drum that you want to use. Most of these rhythms I'm going to show you, you just need a low sound and a high sound. All right, let's move on. I'm going to show you a rhythm now. It doesn't te technically have a name, but um, I, and actually I'm going to play it in this style because this would be more like a West African feel, and there's lots and lots of rhythms from these areas. Um, this is one kind of feel that you can incorporate. I think it's nice to mix things up. So I want to give you a 6-8 feel or a triplet feel rhythm in this case. And um, like I said, this one doesn't really have a name, but I want to play it for you and then I'll break it down. All right. Really, want, you want to move completely different than the last rhythm, right? And that's the beauty of music. Um, it's really powerful. We have lots of different tools in our toolbox, uh, rhythmically speaking. So how do we play this? First of all, this is an alternating hand movement. So that's, that's the good news. One, two, three, one, two, three. 
So you can start there, practice accenting every third note. And then you're going to play uh, basses with your hands. Let's, say, let's say, call that step two. And now finally we're going to bring out the higher tones. The first one we're going to do is in the same hand. So it's one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. So three and five and six, we're going to elevate those, accentuate them, play them louder, play them with a different sound, whatever you want to do, however you want to form that rhythm shape um, is up to you. So the dominant hand is actually playing all accented notes. It's playing It's playing a waltz basically. All right? And the other hand is filling in. All right. You got that one. So that's a 6/8 rolling feel rhythm, kind of a African-esque or West African-esque feel, but like I said that doesn't really have a name. Related to that, Let's go on to another rhythmic feel. I'm going to call this one a feel from North America. Uh, we know that jazz is a North American genre, kind of unique to North America, to American music. And um, I'm going to categorize. Now, there's different kinds of swing feels. This one, I'm just calling a shuffle. And this actually does call back to some of the West African feels and even uh, the music of Japan, for example, in taiko drumming. So it's not exclusive to, to North America, but we're going to call this a shuffle feel because it's another useful kind of rhythmic form that you can apply to any song that you're doing um, and new music as well. So we're going to do the shuffle like this. And that kind of calls back to that jazz feel, right? Jazz, two, three, four, the hi-hat on the two and four. So you can do it either way. The main idea is doom, da, go doom, sa, doom, doom, sa, doom, doom, do, da, doom, doom. All right, and then if you want, you can apply that feel to a song. Let's say you're doing a song in 4-4, kind of a straight feel. Try putting that shuffle onto it and see what happens. I think you're going to find that if you play these for your clients, these kinds of different rhythms, different feels, it, it's going to elicit different kinds of movements, maybe different song ideas. Uh, it might just prompt different, you know, playing. Uh, and like I said, moving in different ways, having different ideas. So that's kind of the the benefit of having lots of different rhythms ready to go uh, that you can produce for your clients and also that you can help your clients play. We're going to wrap up the rhythmic component here with one that's a simple feel, kind of circling back around to where we started with the IU rhythm, but a different feel related to the one we just played. We're going to call this the samba feel, um, and there's lots of different kinds of ways to play samba, but here's one, and this is a straight feel. One, two, one, two. Now, you might hear this, and if you didn't know where it started, you might think it, that the low notes are on the down because that's the way we're used to hearing rhythms, especially in the West. But what's nice about this rhythm is the weight of it is on the offbeats, on the two and the four kind of like that jazz rhythm we just played. So let's count it in and feel that weight on two and four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Da, da, dun, dun. So that's the basic rhythm. Of course, you can vary any of these. For example, if I want to play the samba rhythm, I could simplify it. 
One, two, three, four. I can mix it up. All right, totally up to you. Let's go to some hand percussion now. I've got a few things here that I think you might want to see. Now, I know some of these, as much as we love that sound, I know those of you that like to sterilize everything are going to be thinking, oh my God, don't worry, I've got some things for you. But I wanted to show you this beautiful, authentic seed pod rattle. Because I think a younger client would be super excited to get their hands on something like this, don't you think? Beautiful, it sounds amazing, it's gentle, you can use it for um, all kinds of different sound effects. You can use it like a rattle. You could look into that. Something a little more robust, but also really fun and authentic is this. This is the same seed pod grown up and it's wrapped into this handle. You could tap it, you can hold this for a client, have them tap it. Pretty durable. Moving along, we're going to go to the Brazilian Kashishi. Now these, I just wanted to point out, people like these. They're common, but they're exotic, a little bit exotic. Um, but I do want to let you know that the way you want to play this is holding it in the, at the top, either from the handle and playing down. Or for smaller children, they could get their whole hand around here, maybe put their hand inside here and hold it like that. And that way it's secure. You can also grasp it from the sides like that. So we want to discourage people from doing this, even though that's what most people will do when they get their hands on these. Um, you don't want to do that because you can end up breaking the handle. So just play it this way. Really nice little sweet sound. And again, really nice, authentic. You know, this is rattan. Here's a piece of coconut on the bottom. So real fun. You can use that for um, stories or just, you know, fodder for conversation, talking about other places. And then if none of those suit you, we can always go to our favorite maraca, all right? All of these instruments are lightweight, they're relatively small, pretty easy to play. And with that in mind, I want to give you some tools that, or some suggestions, um, on what kind of sticks and implements that you can use with hand drums to keep the drums safe, keep your ears safe, keep the clients safe. Um, and that would be using things like this, a very small mallet. And this is a rubber mallet. But notice this shaft is very short. I'm not using a full-size drumstick shaft because you get that in your hand and now you've got a lot of leverage and that thing can come whipping down um, on a head like this one and actually dent the head. It can be too loud. So we just want to alleviate that issue by using short sticks with some sort of soft end, right? Now, not the most desirable tone. You could go to something like this. These are pretty popular. I think these come with paddle drums. A little warmer sound. But actually for, for a small child, kind of heavy. Um, another choice would be a, a stick like this, which is lighter. It's got a, a poofy, I call this the um, Cookie Monster Mallet. Nice and soft sounding, not too loud. What rhythm is that? Hopefully you said Ayub. All right, finally, you can use a spatula. And I've done a video on this, actually at World Drum Club, talking about how you can play bongos with this little spatula that I got at Sur La Tab. But, you know, who doesn't like a happy face spatula? Um, and you can use it for cooking, which I've been known to do as well. Um, these are great, not the lightest, but again, if you want to use something that has a nice sound. So you do need to be a little bit careful with these, but you know, that gives you another option. Maybe you can be creative, put some uh, moleskin on one of these and create your own um, alternative to using your hands on some of the hand drums because like I said we do want to make it easy for clients we want to make it musical uh, we want to make it comfortable for everyone physically and uh, sonically all right so I hope this has given you some good ideas to use both rhythmically 
um, and physically. Uh, I think that getting your hands on some of the authentic, you know, traditional instruments is a great idea. Uh, to the degree that you're able with uh, whatever population you work with and the setting as well. But uh, do your best to bring in authentic sounds and rhythms into your music therapy environments. I think your clients will appreciate it and it'll help you grow as a musician. If you'd like to learn more from me, you can visit me at kalanimusic.com. Visit the World Drum Club YouTube channel. I'm posting videos constantly. There's lots of resources there. Thanks for joining me here in the Imagine online platform. I'm Kalani Das. Uh, enjoy using all of these world rhythms in your own practice.